Hello and welcome to another GT7 tune setup, a circuit setup of course in particular at the 700 point level, or just under, 693 in this case, and this is actually a bit of a different tune to what I would usually do, because I like to go for stuff like racing hard tyres, or maybe not even change the tyres at all, but I actually was requested to do this tune by my girlfriend. She's new to Gran Turismo, she wanted a car that's, you know, going to dominate career mode, and of course a GTR is always a good call. Especially when it comes to beginners, it's a very forgiving car, but also we figured if I'm doing it for her anyway, why not put it on YouTube so it can benefit other beginners or people who are just less familiar with the Gran Turismo physics and the kind of finesse that you have to have. So, to cut a long story shorter, the stock version, quote-unquote, which only had the Stage 1 weight reduction, did, as you can see there from the lap, a 152. And I tried to drive it in a way that a beginner would. So, like, throwing it into the corners, stamping on the brakes, very little finesse, kind of approaching it like you would in Need for Speed game. Then, doing this tune, which takes it from the 600 point level to 700, or just under, you can see the lap there, a 140. So literally a 12 second difference. But I also wanted this tune to be two things. Super easy to follow, so there's no suspension tuning, no gearbox tuning, so it's very easy to do. But also, not overly expensive. So this entire build will cost you 70,000 credits. The car itself is like 94,000. So yes, it'll take you, you know, a few minutes, even on lower level events, to earn up that kind of cash. But even if you just run Northern Isle over and over again, you're getting like seven and a half grand a time. So you do that a few times, then you can get this car and basically dominate any 700 point or higher, certainly, event in career mode. Now... Again, it's not for purists. Racing softs are the name of the game, and of course those alone make a huge difference to what the car can do, essentially as close to qualifying tyres as we can get in the game. Those are also the most expensive part of the build, at like 37,000 credits. Completely standard suspension. Again, you could fit that, but again, want to keep the, the price nice and low. We've got the diff fitted. I would definitely recommend doing that, the fully customizable LSD, because this car is extremely unstable under heavy braking if you don't do that. I've got settings of 5, 40, and 30, as you can see. The center diff, the torque vectoring center diff in particular, I think is a very good thing to have for beginners especially, because not only can you adjust it while driving, but having it set on 50-50 instead of the stock's 30-70 uh, split is so much more forgiving because you've got way more grip and power and torque going to the front end of the car to pull you out of corners. It makes it more controlled, more composed, and as I said, more forgiving. Nitrous isn't fitted, but of course it's a 100 grand investment that you might want to make. It's a nice advantage to have. Transmission, completely standard again. We do have stuff like the restrictor and the ECU. You don't have to fit those, but they at least give you the option to reduce the power. Ballast is another good thing to fit as well. You know, don't actually put ballast on it, but have the ballast option. It costs like 800 credits, and that will allow you to get the car into lower level events if you need to. The downforce is not adjusted. You know, rear wings, diffusers, body kits. Well, I haven't done any of that. That's down to you if you want to. And then as far as the racing parts, there are only three other things under this section. The racing discs, racing pads, and stage one weight reduction. That's all you need to do for these. So all in all, like I said, it's like 66 grand, 70 grand, somewhere in that region. Then that is it for the build. Super simple, super easy to do. Now, of course, we'll show you out on the track what this thing looks like in action. So as I mentioned, the GTR is crazy good in all of its forms. It's known for that. It's it's kind of a vehicle that's so good that it's boring, but what better car than that for being a great beginner's vehicle? You could say there are others too, you know, maybe a Mitsubishi Evo or a Subaru WRX, which is true, you know, they are great cars as well, but the GTR is just such a good all-rounder, which can compete way up to the supercar level without even upgrading the power at all. In fact, even with downgraded power. In terms of the lap, like I said, massive difference, a colossal difference in lap time from a 152 down to a 140, which is an insane difference, and it's super easy to drive. As you can see from the way I'm driving it, I'm driving it in a very sloppy way, like I'm really throwing it around, jerking the steering, slamming on the brakes, slamming on the throttle, in a way that I wouldn't usually do, because you need to do that to test a beginner's car. It's got to be a car that can withstand and, and stand up to that kind of punishment while still being really good, really forgiving, and super competitive. So, in my opinion, it ticks all the boxes. If you are less experienced with the game, though, give it a try, because you're going to be the real guys and gals who are testing out what it is like for a beginner. 
So ultimately, it's certainly an extremely OP vehicle for the 700 point level, and of course, if you do fit it with tyres that last a bit longer, such as for endurance races like hard tyres, then that'll take the point level even lower than it is. So technically, you could make it even lighter, you could give it some extra power, so you can adjust those things as and when necessary. But for most scenarios, the vast majority of scenarios, this is more than quick enough to dominate a number. Maybe even the majority of career mode events that it can at least be allowed into. So ultimately, give the tune a try if you are new to the game, give me some feedback on if you find it useful, and of course, stick around for more on the channel. But until next time, I'll see you then, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.